Hey everyone, Doug here with B&H. We're back today with another look at the Sony Alpha 1. Oh, here it is. The Alpha 1 is Sony's latest full-frame mirrorless camera and it is beyond impressive. The specs here are endless with 50.1 megapixels at 30 FPS, 8K video, huge improvements to the electronic shutter, mind-blowing autofocus as always, and the build quality to back it up for basically any professional photographer or filmmaker. It's got the speed and focusing to capture fast action like sports, along with the resolution and dynamic range for portraiture, fashion, or detailed close-ups. Video is phenomenal here as well with internal 8K capture. Filmmakers and photographers alike should find that there is almost nothing the Alpha One can't do. And if you do both, well, let's get started. The Alpha One is built around a 50.1 megapixel CMOS sensor providing richly detailed images. While not quite as high res as Sony's own Alpha 7 R4, what's key here is the Alpha One's 30 FPS burst capture rate. It's hard to believe, but you can basically capture video-like moments in full resolution 50.1 megapixels with this thing. We're gonna get back to this though. Now, 50 megapixels is no joke. There's so much you can pull off this sensor. You can pull off tight crops of practically any shot and have ample resolution to spare. For reference, the camera's APS-C mode still produces a 21 megapixel shot. Combine this with a telephoto lens, for example, and you can achieve stunning close-ups. And with a dynamic range of 15 stops, you can capture a wide range of exposures in a scene. This is true even in low light situations, thanks to the camera's excellent low light performance. Capturing a snowy white exterior from a completely unlit interior is about as big a contrast as you can get. Now, to be fair, this is only a JPEG, but even here, there's a few things to point out. Highlights, though out of focus, are still within reasonable exposure, while shadow detail in the cat's face here is still visible. For ISO 12800, these shadows are surprisingly clean, but most surprising of all is the Animal IAF, which worked instantly and effortlessly, even though the subject is completely backlit and in relatively low light. So what about the autofocus? At this point, Sony's autofocus is known for being pretty remarkable, but it continues to evolve in the Alpha 1 with 759 phase detect and 425 contrast detect AF points covering 92% of the sensor. The biggest change though with the Alpha 1 is how fast the camera recalculates AF data. The Bion's XR processor inside the Alpha 1 performs AF calculations 120 times per second. That's regardless of shooting rate. This means that even if you capture at say 30 FPS, the camera is still always calculating AF five times faster than that shooting rate. Now, on top of that, Sony has also added a new real-time IAF mode here with support for birds. Birds are, of course, completely random, difficult to capture even under normal circumstances, but can the Alpha One do it? Using a 100 to 400 millimeter lens, and sure, let's throw in 30 FPS capture too, I gave Bird IF a shot, and well, the results speak for themselves. Needless to say, with 30 FPS, you have plenty of shots to choose from. The Alpha One can shoot 165 JPEGs or 155 compressed RAW images at up to 30 FPS. You should know that an uncompressed RAW, or in the Alpha One's new lossless compressed RAW, the camera shoots up to 20 FPS. It is a trade-off, sure, but it's still blazingly fast. It's important to note here that while the Alpha One is of course compatible with every Sony E-mount lens, the ultra-fast 120 times per second AF calculation rate can only really be leveraged by lenses with linear actuator motors. And fortunately, that includes the 100-400G master lens that we used. Any lens with linear actuator motors can already take advantage of the AF speed provided here. The last key photography feature is the upgraded electronic shutter. Electronic shutters have traditionally been slower than mechanical shutters, which is prohibitive to using flash sync. But they do have their benefits, notably silent shooting, which has become kind of a big deal in recent years with mirrorless cameras. Silent shooting is of course still here on the Alpha One, but due to improvements in sensor readout speeds, along with the Bion's XR's sheer processing power, the Alpha One actually manages to introduce electronic shutter flash sync 
at speeds up to 1 200th of a second in full frame and 1 250th of a second in APS-C. But even the mechanical shutter takes things a step further with flash sync speeds up to 1 400th of a second in full frame and 1 500th of a second in APS-C crop. Wedding, portrait, and fashion photographers should be able to capture motion and detail in more ways than ever before. The electronic shutter also features an anti-distortion design, leading to a 1.5 times reduction in distortion compared to Sony's Alpha 9 Mark II. Plus, it now has a flicker-free mode that can automatically adjust to combat flickering light sources. Lastly, the Alpha 1 can close its shutter between lens changes to prevent dust buildup. So I said the Alpha 1 could shoot almost anything, didn't I? Well, that includes 8K video at up to 30 FPS. There are no hard set recording limits to 8K video, though the camera's heat management is rated for 30 minutes of 8K recording. Now, out of curiosity, I did actually let the camera record 8K video without interruption and was able to record for just over 60 minutes before not overheating, but before the battery ran out. By the way, 8K video works with full AF and AE. If you're finishing in lower resolutions, you can shoot one wide angle and extract a 4K or even HD crop of the frame while still maintaining extremely high quality video. In my opinion though, the real creative filmmaking potential of the Alpha One comes from its wealth of recording options. Below 8K, you get 4K video at up to 120 FPS. You can use this for beautiful slow motion capture, again with full autofocus support. In the camera's 4K Super 35 mode, the image is produced from a 5.8K crop, giving you crisp oversampled 4K video. But as for technical details, it should be no surprise that the Alpha One doesn't hold back. Internal 8K video is recorded in 10-bit 420, while all 4K formats can shoot in 10-bit 422. You have plenty of bitrate options here as well, with up to 400 megabits recording in 8K, and in 4K you can go up to 600 megabits all intra, though the Alpha One also provides a few long GOP options. H.264 in the form of XAVC-S, and H.265 in the form of XAVC-HS. Color-wise, the Alpha One brings back S-Log 2 and 3, which of course benefit from the camera's 10-bit encoding, along with HLG for in-camera HDR shooting. One really cool addition here, though, is the S-Cinetone color profile, previously only seen in the FX9 and FX6. S-Cinetone is based on the color science of Sony's high-end Venice camera and provides a beautifully smooth cinematic tone to the image, removing the need to grade. Now, for quick turnarounds, S-Cinetone is honestly pretty fantastic, and it really shows off the dynamic range of the camera while preserving pleasant skin tones. So these are just the internal recording options. If you want to really maximize the Alpha One's video quality, you have the option of 16-bit RAW HDMI output to a Ninja 5 recorder. RAW is supported up to 4K 60fps, and the camera can actually record internally in any format simultaneously while outputting RAW video. Now, since we're discussing HDMI, it would be remiss of me to not talk about monitoring the Alpha One. It just so happens that I still have Sony's new Xperia Pro here, and look at that, 4K HDMI monitoring. So let's talk about the body. On the surface, the Alpha One resembles its more recent predecessors, the Alpha 7 R4, Alpha 9 Mark II, and of course the Alpha 7 S III. One particular detail borrowed from the Alpha 9 Mark II is the placement of the AF mode dial. It sits recessed below the burst mode dial on the left side, which, if I'm being honest, might take some getting used to, but it does provide a physical dial for AF configuration. Looking around the body, you can see the traditional exposure and mode dials, along with a wealth of custom function buttons. The menus, by the way, if you're wondering, are of the Alpha 7 S III variety, providing an easy way to dive in and set up the camera. Looking at the connections on the left side, we have a full-size HDMI port, a gigabit ethernet port, headphone and mic jacks, a USB-C connection, and a micro USB connection. On the right side, we have the camera's combination CF Express Type-A and SDXC slots. These slots can accept either card, but only one at a time. While you'll definitely want a CF Express card for the 30 FPS RAW still capture, the camera can actually record 8K video to SDXC cards if you have a fast enough card. On the back side, the Alpha One features a 3-inch tilt angle LCD screen with 1.44 million dots, but even better is the OLED EVF right above that. The EVF is really something. 
It has a 240 hertz refresh rate and blackout free preview, which is absolutely necessary given how fast this camera can shoot. You won't get tripped up during burst shooting, that's for sure. Inside the camera, Sony's 5-axis IBIS returns, providing a 5.5 stop advantage when shooting, and it of course works beautifully in both stills and video. Also inside is Wi-Fi AC support across both 2.4 and 5 GHz bands, which allows the camera to both tether and transmit photos wirelessly. And in conjunction with the Xperia Pro, news and media photographers can upload the Alpha One's enormous raw photos to an FTP server by tethering to the phone's 5G millimeter wave connection. Moving along though, the battery is Sony's Z-series battery, providing around 530 shots when using the LCD, or 430 with the EVF. Users can also charge and power the camera through the USB-C port. Inside is a magnesium alloy chassis, giving the Alpha One the kind of solid feel you'd expect from a professional flagship camera, but it does keep things as light as possible, especially given the tech inside, coming in at only 1.62 pounds. Before we wrap up, here's a few other features the Alpha One brings to the table. Heaf Image Recording returns here, providing 10-bit 422 still images, which should give cleaner, more detailed results than JPEGs. However, there's also a new light JPEG format on board, which could work in a pinch if you need every bit of storage space possible. For news in particular, this might come in handy. In a similar vein, since this is an 8K capable camera, while HD proxy recording isn't new, I do recommend using it here, since it'll really save you a lot of time in post when editing that heavy footage. So, are you excited for the Alpha One? Shooting with this camera just makes me feel like I can shoot anything. The Alpha One is quite simply a zero compromise camera in both stills and video. The resolution, the speed, the autofocus are just so, so reliable, and you would have to try to miss a shot with this thing. More importantly though, because it hits all of these targets, there's almost no type of professional photographer who's left out here. 8K video is simply unreal, and the versatility as a 4K camera means you can shoot pretty much any scene you want. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. So that's it for the Sony Alpha One. I'm Doug with B&H, and I'll see you next time.